Hey, so today we're going to be talking about the relative size of atoms. This is going to be a super short and sweet video, but I think it's worth talking about at this point because atoms are something that are really hard to conceptualize. They're so darn small. These videos are really for my region's chemistry students. Um, feel free to make some suggestions in the comments below as to what topics you would like to see covered in future videos. I have a set curriculum that I'm going through, but I'm always trying to kind of jump ahead and adapt, and I'd love to get your feedback. So without further ado, let's talk about the relative size of atoms. So we're talking about the size of atoms because they are really small and it can be very difficult to actually conceptualize just how tiny they are. They are generally measured in picometers and a picometer is one one millionth of a micrometer or a micrometer and it is one one trillionth, trillion with the T, right? One one trillionth of a meter. So we're talking really, really small. So when we try to measure an atom, we measure it using something called atomic radius. This is the standard and this is what you will find on table S of your chemistry reference table for most of our um, elements. It is defined as one half of the distance between the nuclei of two atoms of the same element when those two atoms are joined in close proximity. So if you look here, we have two atoms side by side. The there is a line joining their nuclei, and the distance between them would be 360 picometers, and half of that would be the atomic radius, which in this case would be 180 picometers. This is actually an exceedingly difficult measurement to take, and depending on whether we're talking about something covalent or something that is a metal or a noble gas, that measurement is taken in different ways but it is always measured in picometers. It's the only measurement available to us that is small enough to measure the size of atoms. Waves of light are generally measured in nanometers. If we're talking about the size of a hair, that would be in micrometers. So you get an idea of the relative size we're talking about. And I'm, like I said, I'm gonna link to a great video later that's going to help you kind of conceptualize just how tiny this is. So you're going to find atomic radius as the very last column on table S. I have given part of it here for elements one through 20. So if we look at hydrogen, for example, how many picometers is the atomic radius of hydrogen? How many picometers is the atomic radius of helium? So hydrogen is 32 picometers and helium is 37. Both of those are relatively small, which makes a lot of sense because they only have one orbital or one shell. If we go up to lithium, our next element, element atomic number three, and we look, what is its atomic radius? The atomic radius of lithium is going to be 130 picometers. That's quite a jump. But remember, it's down in period two, so now we have two orbitals or two shells containing electrons. However, look at beryllium, element number four. If we're looking at beryllium, what happens to the atomic radius? Is it larger or smaller than that of lithium? Well, it's smaller and you may think, but it also has two shells. What is going on? And I'm gonna talk to you about that right now. So this is a great diagram showing the relative size of atoms. If you look, helium and hydrogen are super tiny down in that 30 to 37 picometer range. But when we go to lithium, we're back up to 130. But as we move across the periodic table and we move from left to right, we see that we are becoming increasingly what? So as we go from left to right across the periodic table, our elements are becoming smaller. We're gonna to get to that in just a moment. As we go down the periodic table, our elements are becoming larger. Atomic size is increasing, which makes a lot of sense because 
As we go down, remember in each period we are adding shells, which as we're adding those layers, it makes sense that those atoms are going to become larger. But then why are they becoming smaller as we go across? We're adding electrons, why are they getting smaller? Well, that's kind of a complex idea, and I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible for you here. There is an attraction between electrons and protons in an individual atom. So think about this. What is the charge on a proton? Good. Protons are positive. And what's the charge on an electron? Great. Electrons are negative. And what happens with opposite charges? Well, they definitely attract. So if opposites attract, we always have an attraction between our positive protons and our negative electrons. But in this case, I want you to specifically think that the attraction is between the protons in the nucleus and the electrons in that valence shell outside the nucleus. Remember, the valence shell is the most outer shell of electrons on any atom. So we have an attraction between the protons of the nucleus and the valence shell of the electrons, positive versus negative. Think about it like your refrigerator. Have you ever put paper, something on your fridge, maybe a great test or a piece of artwork on your fridge with a magnet? If you've done that, there's an attraction between the magnet and the metal of your refrigerator. But you have something in between it. You have some paper. As we move across the periodic table, those electrons are becoming more and more attracted to the increasing number of protons in the nucleus. Because as our atomic number goes up, our number of protons are also going up. So it's squeezing down just a little bit. So each element, as we move from left to right, is getting a little bit smaller because that attraction between the protons in the nucleus and the valence electrons is increasing as we shove more protons into the nucleus. Likewise, as we go down, however, they're getting larger, not just because we have more shells, but we also have something happening calling, called <laughs> electron shielding or nuclear shielding. And that's where, because we're adding more layers more shells between the nucleus and that valence level, we're getting a decrease in that attraction and that's allowing the atoms to be a little bit bigger. Think about what happens when you try to put five or six pieces of paper on your fridge with a magnet. I've done that before. I love menus and I love takeout and I used to put them all on my fridge and I'd try to stack three or four deep with one magnet and invariably they'd slide down the fridge. They wouldn't hold anymore. I'd find them in a pile on the floor. So as we add shells to our atoms, that attraction between the nucleus and those outer valence electrons is being decreased because the layers in between are interfering with that attraction. So that's the explanation for your relative size of your atoms in a nutshell. I'm linking a video, a great one from a group called Corridor Crew. Um, they are actually special effects artists working out of LA. They did an amazing video showing you the relative size, not just of different atoms, but of also the subatomic particles within the atoms. I think it's great. Give it a watch. Thanks for joining me on this really brief explanation of the relative size of atoms. Our next video is going to be exploring bright line spectra or where colors come from. Thanks.